Hi guys, today I'm going to teach you, uh, we'll show you an example of the coupon method and the blunts method for resection. Now this is my um, a previous test that I did. So uh, I mean, it's actually for my students as well, but just to show you guys how to do it. So now to start, you start with the sketch. Uh, you first take all the readings that you provided. So you'll be provided with di uh, directions from M, so M is the point you are trying to find, uh, and then you have A, B, C, D, and D's uh, coordinates, A, B, C, and D. So um, the first thing is, I mentioned in the question that M, C is your line that you need to use to orientate this. So M, C, that is also your furthest one, so you, as you can see in the sketch. So this shows that you should draw your C to M to form your Q in the Q point method. Um, so since we have C, the other points we have is B, C, and D, uh, B, A, B, and D. My apologies. Um, so what that means is you'll see B is supposed to be here. I didn't include it in the sketch, but what you're supposed to look for is uh, two directions that are closest to 90 degrees that exclude your C because that's your longest ray or the ray you're using to orientate. So in this case uh, A and D are about 92 degrees from each other plus minus. So you're going to use them to form your triangle and to work out your um, orientation. So at M you're going to start at M then you're going to try and draw a circle that encloses D and A with M. So you're going to start with first the circle. Then you're going to extend the line from uh, C to M to point on the uh, circle and that's your Q point. Then all you have to do is connect the lines for MA, MD, MQ, AQ and DQ. And you see in all the calculations that basically we can work out the distances and directions for almost all of these lines. All right, then you put in your alpha. So in this case, I just wanna highlight in the Q point method, uh, alpha and beta, if you swap them around, it's not the end of the world. You can still work out your calculations. You may just keep in mind alpha and beta. However, with the Blunt's method I'm gonna do now now, you need to know that your alpha is your first and second points angle, uh, beta is your second and third points angle, and then the third and first point angle is theta. All right, that's standard. This calculation will not work if you do not do that. So that's why these are angle uh, label specific, or these you can um, vary. Although theta is preferably the one that you're not using um, at these angles here. All right, so alpha, alpha, so it looks over that line there, that angle. I um, mean, in a cycle, in a circle, something I forgot the word, but looks over basically a uh, line in a circle. Then any angle that does the same line is also um, the yeah, it's also the same angle. And with beta, it looks over this line, so this line is also going to be beta. So that's how you place or draw out your sketch. Now to start, you can have your alpha. Uh, now alpha, these are the answers. These are what we calculated. These are marks I gave for the paper uh, for each thing. And then this is the cumulative mark. So yes, I think I'm just going to work with just showing you guys the answers basically. So now for alpha, alpha is on this line here. And then it's got this angle over here, which is Basically, this angle plus alpha will give you 180 degrees because it's a line. So what you can do is you can say MC minus MD. But that's going to give you a negative answer. So what I suggest is you could do MD minus MC. And it basically gives you this entire angle here. So from alpha's line here all the way around to MC. So if you say 360 minus that, you'll get this angle, okay? And we agree that this angle plus alpha gives you 180 degrees. 
So you'll say this angle, um, so which is this one here, minus 180 will give you your alpha. Then for your beta, you can basically say MA minus MC, so it's MA's direction minus MC will give you this angle here. 180 degrees minus this angle will give you a beta because it's on a line. So it's basically just geometry and trigonometry that we are basically using to assess the sketch. Then your theta is basically these two angles together. So it's MD minus MA, which gives you this, minus 180. Um, in this case, it would be in this triangle. So the rest of this triangle will be theta. So um, we calculate it as 87. And then the three angles or directions shoot as the angles. Three angles together should give you 180. Now you start off with A and D because those are the two points you have coordinates for. And you can work out your joins with these points. All right, so you can work out your distance and direction from A to D, which I gave you. It's 266 degrees and 1390 meters between the two. And then if you test it back, you'll see that you get the same coordinates as D, or very similar coordinates. So that means you test, uh, you've done your calculation correctly. Uh, I have a joins and polar video uh, that you can go look at to um, see how to do that. In DQ, um, for, for the next thing you'll do is you'll have, okay, so you have this direction, you have these angles, alpha and beta. So to get Q, from D, you would say your DA, which is the opposite to this 266. So you will say 266 minus 180 because it's the opposite direction to get DA plus, because we always work clockwise, beta gives you your direction to Q. Okay. Um, and then your direction, uh, there's a sign rule that you use. So you basically use this sign rule, then you use your direction, then you get um, this length over here. Then for A, you do the same thing. You're going to say AD. We already worked out AD over here. Plus or minus alpha, because it's anti-clockwise. So clockwise is always positive. Anti-clockwise is always negative or subtracting. Then so AD minus alpha gives you your AQ. Then you've got base, and then you also use the sign rule to work out your AQ length. So that's now how you work out your distance and direction. So now we basically have distance direction from A to D, distance direction from A to Q, and from D to Q. So since you have the direction and distances for these two, you can work out a polar, because you have the coordinates, distances, and directions. So you can work out the polar to work out your Q's coordinate, or preliminary coordinate. Now. I set this up, it's not the most realistic scenario because usually you would get your coordinates for Q from the two cal polar calculations to be slightly different, but in this case they're perfectly right. But you'll see that your Y and your X for your uh, Q coordinates that you calculated from the polars should give you the same or very similar coordinates. And you get the average of that and it gives you your preliminary Q coordinates. So now we have A, D, and Q's coordinates. And now what we can do is we can work out CQ. So we have C's coordinate, and we have Q's preliminary coordinate. So we can work out a join. Uh, so we use, uh, we work out the join, and it will give us our direction and our distance. Okay, um, I see actually, sorry, this is uh, my mistake. It's from Q to C. Let me just put that in. Q to C. All right. That's from Q, Q to C. The reason why I do that is because it's three degrees. You worked it out from there to there. Because that's a three degree angle. And then you can test it uh, to see if you get the same C coordinates. All right. Now what you do is you will take, because Q to C, let's see right look, Q to C's direction is the same as M to C's direction, you can compare them to orientate your directions. Alright, 
So now you say um, your MC, which is 347.31, uh, and you've got your uh, orientated direction. So this is 345.28. You basically say orientated minus your um, observed, and it gives you minus 0 degrees, 2 minutes and 3 seconds. So now that's your orientation because this direction and the direction from M to C should be the same. So since they're slightly different, that difference should be applied to the rest of your directions. So you will take all these directions, that's degrees, minutes and seconds, and you will add that correction to each one of them. Alright, then you get those. Okay, then, for, then you work out uh, with your triangle ADM. Now ADM includes the point you're trying to work out and the two coordinates uh, in the circle. So basically all three coordinates that we combine in the circle except for Q, that triangle. Now you need to work out the angles for these triangles, uh, for each side. So for angle A, what we can do is we can say we're going to use these orientated directions now, but we will use AM minus AD and it will give us that direction or the angle. For D, we will say a, a DA, which we calculated saying this minus 180 degrees. So we say DA minus DM will give us that angle. And then for M, what we can do is we'll say MD minus MA's direction, the oriented directions, and that will give us our M's angle. If these three equal to 180 degrees, you've known you've done everything right up until this point. Um, assuming you've used the same, the right values up until this point. Now, with those angles, we can calculate what our DM's direction would be and our AM's direction as well as distances. So, for the distances, we'll use the sign rules again. Well, um, for the uh, for the, uh, the directions, we'll say DA, for example, minus angle D will give us our DM. And for A, AD minus our angle A will give us our AM. Okay, and then uh, we use those distances and directions to work out our polars. Uh, and then these coordinates will be coordinates for M, which we should get the averages of, so your Y's and your X's, and that will give you your preliminary coordinates for M. Alright, now I just, the test ray is a very simple procedure, you can see that in the other video, uh, where you use the formula to basically calculate if it's closer to Y, closer to X, and you use that formula to calculate what the difference is, and then apply that to your coordinates. Now, what I want to show you is the Blunt's method. So, the most important part of the Blunt's method is your sketch in the beginning. You need to figure out which is the longest ray from the point you're trying to calculate, which in this case is C. So, C, since it's the longest, has to be the second one in your order. I do not have it here. Let me really show it. So, it should be like this. My apologies for not having this already in. Alright, so basically what you're going to have is this. C is your longest one, so it has to be second in this order. D then has to be the first one because you have to go in clockwise order where this one's the second one. So if you used A and tried to work clockwise, D will be your second one. If you use D and work clockwise, C would be your second one. So then it will be D, C, A. So that's what you're supposed to use for your Blunt's method. Okay? So that's what you use uh, to calculate. That's what you do for your sketch. Then alpha is between the first and the second. Beta is between the second and the third. And theta is between the third and the first. These have to be standard. All these formulas are solely based on this sketch, on how the sketch is made, on and this order. If any of these things are in the wrong order, 
or the wrong um, way around, then your clear answer is wrong. Okay, so once again, these alpha and betas could be swapped around, they're just the labels for those um, angles that you use alpha and beta for one of them. This one, alpha, beta, and theta are specific because these formulas use your alpha uh, and your beta to calculate the formulas. If you use the wrong alpha and beta, all these calculations are wrong, and then your dx and dy will be wrong. Okay, and if this is not in the same order, then these formulas will also be wrong. They could be the right values, but they would be the wrong polars. So they might be positive 698 because you swapped them around, but that's not right. Okay. You calculate your alpha, beta, and theta. You literally just take the directions and subtract them from each other. Um, for example, theta will be md minus ma. Beta will be ma minus mc. And then um, alpha will be md minus ma. But then you take that angle that you calculated, and you say 360 minus that angle to give you your alpha. So add to 360 degrees because it's one revolution, that is correct. Then your cot and uh, your cot and, and your co uh, alpha and beta have to be these answers because you strictly have to stick to alpha and beta. Then you follow the formulas you can see in the other video to get your different values. And then you add up 5, 6 and 7 to give you your dx and then 8, 9, and 10 to get your dy. These numbers are also important because those, are, if you put the wrong formulas by the wrong numbers, it's not going to give you the same totals. So you have to do the whole Blunt's method. Once you've sorted out the sketch, just follow the Blunt's method purely step for step and it'll give you the right answers. And I know these answers are correct because we use the same coordinates and directions for Q point method. And we've got the same orientation angle. Um, there's a little trick I hope the students would have seen. It wasn't a trick, it was a, something I mentioned. I said Q point and Blunt's method gives you the same answer because the Blunt's method is basically a simplified form of the Q point method. So if you saw that your correction for orientation and then your orientated angles were the same answers, that means that you did both methods correctly. Because they're the same method, this is just a simpler, simplified version, but they're supposed to give you the exact same answers if you have the exact same readings. Alright, so I hope this kind of helped you guys. Um, yeah, I didn't show you now all the specific formulas, but you can reference other videos to see the formulas. Alright, thanks guys.